Hey y'all, my name is Christian, I'm a millennial, and this is the Millennial Mind. Millennials get a bad rap for being lazy, non-productive members of society. They are also told that their opinions are warped and that they don't matter. This podcast is designed to express an opinion, but from a millennial's perspective. We will talk about everything from love and relationships to pop culture to pretty much everything that comes to mind. Come join me on this journey of speaking my mind, and I hope that all of you are speaking your mind as well. Okay, so I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about goalie gummies. Now, we all know that apple cider vinegar is the new health kick right now, okay? So you're supposed to take a shot or two in the morning. Some people take it three times a day. And you're supposed to get a lot of health benefits, such as losing weight, appetite control, etc. If you guys have ever taken apple cider vinegar shots, it is... <laughs> a very strong taste, okay? It's a very strong taste. It burns your throat when it goes down just the whole nine. I used to take apple cider vinegar shots as well, and I just got sick of the taste. So I tried to find an alternative to it where I wouldn't lose the benefits, but the taste would be a little bit better. That's when I found out about goalie gummies. Now, goalie gummies, they are little gummies that has apple cider vinegar in it and you get all of the same benefits of an apple cider vinegar shot so the appetite control um, the weight loss etc it's really tasty so you don't have that burning sensation that's going down your throat every time you consume it it's amazing it comes in nice little packaging they also have um, you can also get an an individual bottle if you want to try it, or you could do the one month supply, three month supply, or even a five month supply of these gummies. I take them every day and I love them. I try not to eat them as candy because they're just that good. If you want to take advantage of these gummies, I do have a special promo code for my listeners. You can go to go.goalie.com backslash C Fuller to get an additional 5% off your purchase. And there is nothing wrong with additional savings. I will take whatever I can get. So if you want to take advantage of these gummies, go to go.goalie.com backslash C Fuller to get additional savings. Hey y'all, welcome to another episode of The Millennial Mind. Thank you so much for joining me on this journey of speaking my mind, and I hope that all of you are speaking your minds as well. So we're going to get right into this episode. I always say that I'm excited about this episode, but I'm really, 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 really excited for this episode. Because why? We got a new president. We got a new president. We got a new president. And I'm so happy. Girl. Child. Boy. Trump is out of office. Biden is officially in. Woo. For all of my international listeners out there, you probably saw the news that Trump is gone now, thank God, and Biden is in, and he is officially our 46th president of the United States. To say that the past four years has been a blur would be an understatement. It would be a complete understatement. I don't even, I can't even explain like my mindset from 2016 up until probably yesterday. Because I was like, I'm just thinking we are just in the Hunger Games just waiting who's going to get killed next. (laughs) 
that's how I felt. Like, I, I didn't feel like we had a president. I barely thought we had a functioning government. It was just a hot mess. And I know all of you who are in international countries are like, what the heck is going on in the United States? I had that same question. And I'm sure other citizens like me had the same question as well. The past four years were just hell, complete hell. Um, I'm glad they're over. I'm glad that we have a new president and that we can move on with our lives. Now, with that being said, for those of you who may not know, more specifically, my international listeners, for each president that is elected for the United States, we have an inauguration ceremony. Now, the inauguration was on January the 20th. So hopefully everyone should have seen clips or the actual inauguration live. But it is a big to-do. You have the pomp and circumstance. You have the ceremonies. You have the speeches. You have the singing. And, of course, you have the balls and everything. So I just want to touch on the inauguration for just a little bit. This is going to be a shorter episode. But that's okay. Because that's my business. Like Tabitha Brown says. But let's get into it. The first thing I want to say is that I am so happy, so happy that we have a competent president in the Oval Office now. It's just been a strain to listen to people talk about Trump, to even hear Trump speak. (laughs) In actuality, it, it was just... It just made my head hurt. It was too much. It got to the point where I could not even watch the news because I was just tired. I was tired of the shenanigans. I was tired of the foolishness. I was tired of the lying. I was tired of it all. Okay. So I wasn't even watching the news. The parts that I did watch, which most likely came up on Al Gore's internet, uh, <laughs> um, the the clips that I did see, it was it was strange, it was mind boggling, it was very distressing to know that we do not have a competent president who doesn't even know basic civics. It was crazy. So to have Joseph Biden in office now, who is seasoned who has been a politician for many years, who was the vice president under Barack Obama for um, his term from from 2008 to 2016. And to hear him speak and to hear him speak, you know, halfway intelligently was just a sigh of relief for me. That's what came from me was a sigh of relief. I'm like, thank God we have somebody in there who has some common sense for once. (laughs) So there's that. But I think the most monumental thing that happened at this inauguration was that the first woman vice president, not only the first woman, the first black woman vice president, not only that, but the first Asian American vice president was sworn into office to serve as vice president of the United States. First in history, in American history. So this isn't just black history. This isn't just Asian history. This is American history. Never have we had a woman to serve as vice president. So you know that the, that the next step from here is president. You already know that. But to see that, and especially me being a black woman, to see someone that looks like me, who has a little bit of melanin, 
who is taking the oath to uphold the Constitution and to protect the country at all costs in her role as vice president. Not only that, but to see a woman in that role, seeing that she is the first to break that cycle of having man after man after man after man as vice president. She's the first to do it as a woman. That's monumental. That puts a huge mark in history. And I thought that I was, I thought that I was proud when Barack Obama became president. And that's true. I was. I skipped class. I was in college, my first year of college. I skipped class to see his inauguration. But to see a a black woman, a a woman who is a minority to become the vice president of the United States, I was almost in tears. I was almost in tears because it was just so much what we call black girl magic because it was, it was just so much to take in. And I I hope she knows of the huge role that she has right now and the mark that she's made in history. And I'm sure she does. She's a very intelligent person. And I don't know if I said her name yet, but her name is Kamala Harris. For those who you, who may not know Kamala Harris um, is the, um, it's the vice president now. So to see that it was just monumental and I, and, and I'm sure she understands um, the mark that she's made in history. But not only that, okay, there's more. So she was sworn in by the first Latina justice to be sworn into the Supreme Court. Come on now. That's just history all around. It's just like, what? What am I watching right now? So when I watched her being sworn in, I was more excited about her being sworn in than Joseph Biden. (laughs) I was, I was, I, I don't know why that was. Well, no, I do know because she was a woman and a minority. Um, but I was just, I was just so proud to see yet another historical moment. And I hope that it gets to the point where we'll see our first female president. I think at that point, I'll probably be in tears. I know I will. I know I will. I'm not even joking. I'm not going to even try to joke about that. I know I will. Okay. So there was a historical moment there. Another thing that I liked about the inauguration was the fashion. I always look for the fashion. Now, I always thought like when somebody got married in um, England, like somebody from, from the royal family got married, I would think, man, their fashion be on point. I would just love to see it. It's the same thing for us in the United States. For the inauguration, a lot of people are looking at the fashion. So the fashion of past presidents and first ladies, the fashion of um, the president, vice president, their spouses, etc. So everybody, uh, I should say the women, we're on point. Do you hear me? Okay. Dr. Jill Biden, who is the first lady now and who is also the wife of Joe Biden, she wore this, it was this blue suit that was fire. Okay. Then we had um, Kamala Harris, the vice president, who wore this purple suit. And it looked really good on her. It was just fire. But let me tell you that Michelle Obama, every time she decides to step out the house, she's slaying somebody's edges off. I don't know who designs her outfits. I don't know what store she'd be going to, but Shelly Shell, I need to know. 
You need to do an Instagram live or something. Can you do a podcast episode on that? I know you got a podcast. Can you do an episode on that? On like your fashion? Because every time, no fail, she be slaying. She wore this maroon pantsuit. It was amazing. Hair was laid. Just everything. And I stand Michelle Obama. So maybe I'm a little bit biased. I'm sure I am. I probably am. I love Michelle Obama. But this year, every time her fashion just be on point and I just love to see it. So the fashion is definitely a thing to see at the inauguration. Everybody else, mostly the men, was like black. It was black. So to see these pop of colors from these women was just like, yes, that's how you're supposed to do it. You want to stand out. You want people to be able to recognize you in the crowd. You want to make a statement. And that's what they all did. So kudos to um, Madam Vice President Kamala Harris or Kamala Harris, um, First Lady Dr. Jill Biden, and then former First Lady Michelle Obama. The last thing that I thought was really interesting about the inauguration was a poem that was done. Now, I didn't know that there was a poem that's done that's done in every inauguration that blew my mind. So apparently I wasn't listening when or really paying attention when Obama was inaugurated because I guess there was a poet or at, at his as well. But anyway, there was a poet, her name was Amanda Gorman, and she was the National Youth Poet Laureate at um, President Biden's inauguration. And she said a poem, or she recited rather, a poem that really was powerful. It was convincing. She was confident when she said it. She stood tall. If I was her mother, I would be so proud. I think I would be crying. I would be crying if I heard my baby speak on a national platform like that. And I believe she's only 22. So to see her on that stage and to recite that poem the way that she did and with so much fervor and so much power and confidence, it was just, I was like, yes, you know, another woman that is exuding this confidence even in a sea of men just exuding that confidence and that willpower and and that power all together. And I just love to see it. So those were the three main things that I liked about the inauguration. Have you guys seen it yet? Have you guys at least seen clips or seen it live? What were your favorite parts? Let me know in the comments below. You can also send me an email at mindofmillennials at gmail.com. Make sure to like and subscribe to this podcast. We are available on pretty much every major platform. So Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, um, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts. So make sure you like and subscribe so that we can become more visible to new listeners. And of course, I always have a quote for you all. This actually comes from Amanda Gorman's poem that I was mentioning before called The Hill We Climb. She said, the new dawn blooms as we free it, for there is always light if only we're brave enough to see it, if only we're brave enough to be it. True words right there. Well, thank you guys so much for listening to this rather short episode, but I hope you guys enjoyed it. And until next week, I will see you guys soon.